Hey, hey, how you guys doing? So this video is about two things. It's about AI and how to look at AI over the next year or so as a developer, but it's also about this AI powered webcam called the Insta360 Link. So if you're interested in this webcam, you can watch this video and you'll see a bunch of demonstrations as we go. But the main subject really is for people who watch my channel, generally speaking, people who are interested in development, interested in what the future is going to hold, how AI integrates into all these things and all these things rather. All right, let's just jump into it. So I'm pulling out my notes here. So first of all, uh, this is an AI powered webcam and it represents, I think it's an, an analogy to how everybody should look at AI. AI is going to be an assistive technology rather than a replacement of people. So professionals will use AI to assist them in their jobs, which means ultimately your jobs will get easier, will be more productive, the quality of the output will increase. So in terms of software development and developers, that means you're going to use it to help you write code. But there's no way that an AI will replace a developer anytime with, I would say, at least in the next five to 10 years. Don't think it will. And for a simple reason is because I believe it's reached a plateau, first of all, and it's actually Apparently, it's been really diminishing in its capability since um, chat GPT hit the scene in November. Uh, well, last November is November 2022. We're recording this in August if you're watching this in the future. So look at this webcam, of course. It has a bunch of AI capabilities that will uh, not replace professional videographers, but it will make the production of reasonable quality video that much easier. For example, in terms of AI, this camera has a gimbal on top so it's a rotating head and you can just use hand gestures to tell the AI to tell the camera through the AI to track you so it's using AI to track you it's using AI to keep me in focus or not it's pretty cool so again it's not replacing professional videographers but it's definitely facilitating the process I'm not sponsored by this company by the way they did send me the webcam for free so that's cool uh, and because it's good, it's really good, it's the best webcam I ever use, I decided I'm going to let people know about it. I don't take on too many ads. Uh, people who follow me know that. I get bombarded with ad requests all the time, sponsorship requests. I don't, I don't take them. But when something is presented to me that's interesting to the audience, then I will uh, take it on. Again, this is not sponsored. They're not paying me. This camera was sent to be for free, though. So how... Should developers view AI and how should you integrate it into your uh, work? Whether you're learning a learning to code now or you're a professional developer. So if you're learning to code, uh, definitely use AI to help you answer questions that may come up. It's normal when you're first learning how to code and you're first developing those nerd eyes, that comprehension of the whole landscape. Uh, you're going to come across concepts and you're going to come across snippets of code that may be confusing for you. So instead of searching on Google, etc., it might be easier to just go to ChatGPT and get some answers there. Now, you have to be careful with ChatGPT. They're not always 100% accurate. Uh, apparently, in the last few months, its accuracy has really tanked. Uh, I've seen it myself. Uh, several other people have seen it. That speaks to the brittleness of AI. That speaks to the brittleness of AI. What do I mean by that? So... A friend of mine who has an AI-based business, he develops custom chatbots for our companies. And he was telling me when they're developing narratives for the AI based on the trained data, they will, for example, they'll, have, they'll be training their AI based on the data set that's provided for them. And they'll get one part of the narrative working. And then they're working on another part of the narrative is not working. And then they will, they'll get that other part of the narrative working. And then all of a sudden, the thing that was working before will, will get broken. So it's very brittle. It's, very, it's a very delicate process. So I activated this AI camera. See, the camera's doing this. I don't have a camera person. I activated it with a hand gesture, as you, you may have not noticed. So I'm going to deactivate it by doing this. So the camera flashes. So now it's stuck. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this camera also has a toolbar. There we go. So I can uh, tweak this a little bit, tweak this positioning. I find the AI useful. The tracking AI is pretty useful, but I find it's not perfect, especially when you're sitting, but still pretty, pretty good. What's cool about this Insta360 Link webcam is that uh, 
look at the image. The image quality is very good. Like typically, I'll shoot my videos with uh, high-end cinema cameras. Let me get that and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. This is one of my cinema cameras. So this is like a $5,500 US cinema camera and then you put on a lens, it could be you know, at least a thousand. Um, so this is a, you know, a $6,500 solution. Now, of course, the webcam is not going to compare to this thing, but in many respects, this has, this is a very good image. I'll overlay an image of what a cinema camera can do. And you can take a look at it now. And you see that it's actually, it's, it's better, but it's not so much better than this webcam. So this is kind of a cool webcam if you're a streamer or if you're doing Zoom calls, you're doing business calls. It's much better than the webcam that you typically see built into a computer. I'll overlay that here. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, pretty cool. So besides the AI capability, I can use hand gestures. It looks for, I just activate it again, and I'll say, let's zoom down out a little bit. There we go. So it's pretty cool. Just using hand gestures, control. There's a several things it can do. Uh, I'm not going to go over everything here. But again, the AI is not replacing a cameraman, that's for sure. And it's definitely not replacing a professional camera. But instead of using my professional camera here, this is so much easier. I just set it up, plug it in, boom, bang, Bob's your uncle. Again, that's the whole point of technology is just to speed up processes and to facilitate things. So if you're learning to code, I would embrace AI. I would do the fundamentals. So if you're in my mentoring program or you're doing my web developer course, do the fundamental training, learn the five languages. And then if you do run into issues, well, I would complete my fundamentals training first. I have an interactive platform I develop and work with many districts over the years to really refine the way I teach and deliver content. I have a custom platform. So go through that and then when you start re really getting into uh, coding and you get into concepts you can't understand, j jump over to ChatGPT, ask some questions, interact and engage with the material. Uh, so ChatGPT is like, you know, it's like having a live tutor there, in a sense, not always perfect, but can help you out. If you are a developer and you haven't looked at AI yet, I would definitely look at AI, whether it be code completion tools like Copilot, which you have built into your, into your code editors, using ChatGPT, it's not a panacea, it's not going to do everything for you, and it does make mistakes, so be careful, but it can really speed up the process. Uh, there's something in development called paired programming that got popular in the late 90s, where you would have two coders, one person would do the main coding, it would be a co-pilot coder, it would help a lot, would help out along the way. A lot of times when you're writing code, you may be writing code and you just kind of, why is that, why is this not working? And you can't see it because you're in it. And then, uh, but if you have a co-pilot, I used to get one of my fellow developer friends, hey, come here, come here, look at this. What am I doing wrong? And they could see it right away because it's fresh for them. And vice versa. I have a friend of mine call me, I, I can't figure it out. I can't figure this out, Steph. And I walk over and I go, oh, it's because it is. Oh, okay, yeah. Your brain's like that. You may run into a problem and you just don't get it. So, you know, what? a lot of times I tell people, just, just, just step away. Do something else, wait the next day, and typically the problem, your brain figures it out on its own. Or these days, you can go to ChatGPT, as opposed to Stack Overflow, you go to ChatGPT and say, hey, I want to do this, 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 and you might get an answer. Chances are you can get a pretty good answer. Although, as I said earlier, uh, I'm recording this in late August, I've heard lots and lots of reports, people saying that the, the uh, ChatGPT is getting stupider. It go, that goes to the brittleness of the AI, of AI in general. As I mentioned, my friend before, with his AI company, you fix one thing and something else over here will break. That happens. So what AI will bring to the table, it brings to the table what all other new technologies are brought to the table. What this webcam brings to the table, you're seeing the uh, quality to cost ratio become more and more favorable, meaning for less and less money, you'd be able to get more and more result and output. So this webcam is only a few hundred dollars and it's doing a really, really good job, right? A really good job. No, not as good as a seventh to six thousand or five thousand dollar cinema camera. But for sit downs like this, this type of communication, this is fantastic. AI does that as well. AI is compressing that ratio. It's making developers more productive. It's making many professions more productive. How it's going to work out you know, it's hard to say. I get the impression again that AI is brittle, so it's not going to be this this 
this watershed moment that people thought it would be. It's not going to be like everything's tumbling now because AI does everything. We're seeing pretty quickly now that it's not the case. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. But it's something to embrace. And in fact, in my mentoring program, I'm going to be in integrating more and more lessons and discussions about how to integrate AI into your workflows. One last thing about this camera before I let you guys go. I always say don't bring an 18-wheel semi to a move where you need to move one chair. You know, you don't want to overkill. That's a big mistake that beginner developers make. Beginners in any field really make is that they, they, they try or they think that they have to bring the most advanced and sophisticated tool set to the job when sometimes you just need something simple. Do you need to use a, a $6,000 or $5,000 cinema camera to shoot a vlog like this? No. If you're interested in this camera, link's below. You can click on it, click on, check, take a look at it. Um, also, if you're interested in my boot camp, link's below, unclesteph.com. If you want my standalone solo courses, you can take a look below as well. If you have any questions, put them under this video. I'll be happy to answer. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you.